Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is Peter Bianca. I am the director of bands here at the Yale and at Norton Middle School. I'd like to welcome all of you to our winter concert for 2018. We have two very energized, very enthusiastic groups of young performers who are going to uh, share their talents with you this evening. Before we begin, I just wanted to offer up a few thank yous. Uh, some people are in the crowd, some people are not. Uh, first, I wanted to thank Dr. Joseph Bayer, our superintendent of schools, for his vision of a strong and vibrant music program. I also want to thank our Yale principal, Mr. Martin Gagan, for his support of the program. I would also... I would also like to thank our uh, custodial staff, uh, Mark Bramwell, Steve Gove, and all the other countless individuals that have helped to set up the risers, the chairs, the seats you're all sitting on. They do a fabulous job every year, so thanks to them. I also want to thank the teachers and the staff here at the Yale, because without them and, and their willingness to uh, support the program and let the kids out of class to come down to band and everything else, we wouldn't have a program. So I want to thank them. And last but not least, you may have noticed the decorations that are on the sides of the walls on the stage over here. Uh, those are the work of our awesome art teacher, Linda Kabat, who couldn't be here tonight, but I wanted to acknowledge her work and thank her very much. And last but not least, I wanted to thank all of you that are here tonight. Uh, parents, aunts, uncles, grandparents, you've all given your time, your energy, your money to support these children in their pursuit of music as they're on their journey. And without you, none of us would be here tonight. So one round of applause for all of you. And with that, we're going to start with our Yelp chorus. So I'm just going to get the kids up here. It'll be another minute or so, and then we'll start. Thank you very much.
So for that awesome version of Jingle Bells, I just wanted to point out that we had two awesome sleigh bell players, Aiden Kane and Vivian Bronsky. I just want to give a wave. <laughs> we just heard was My Dreidel, traditional Hanukkah song. The next piece we're going to play is uh, Ode to Joy, which comes from a larger work called The Ninth Symphony by Ludwig van Beethoven. And before we uh, play this version of it, um, I just wanted to give a very quick little explanation about this piece, and more importantly about the composer behind it. So I'm sure everybody in this room has heard the name Beethoven at some point in their lives. He's one of the most renowned composers uh, in the history of music. And I could go on and on and on about what an amazing performer he was, what an amazing composer he was, and the innovative things he brought to music composition that are still shaping uh, people who write music today. But the other side to that is uh, Beethoven the man, and the life he lived, uh, the, the, the trials and tribulations he had to endure, and how that shapes him as a person, and, and Quite frankly, how he serves as a really good example and a really good role model for these students and anybody who is dealing with adversity in their lives. So, very quick little little story about Beethoven. Um, his father was a musician, and his father had great hopes for Beethoven as a young boy. Uh, his father wanted Beethoven to sort of follow in the footsteps of Mozart. Mozart was another composer, very very famous, very very well known who was a, a child prodigy, writing full pieces of music that were very advanced at the age of five and six years old. And Mozart was taught by his father as well. Well, Beethoven's father had this idea that he could pass his son off as another Mozart and tour him throughout Europe and make lots and lots of money. Well, Beethoven was a bit of a late bloomer, and Beethoven couldn't withstand the pressure that his father would put on him. And Short into the story, the whole thing ended, ended in disaster, more or less. Um, Beethoven's father was not a very, very nice guy. His mother passed away when he was a teenager, and so he did not know a very bright or very happy childhood. When he was in his 20s, uh, he went out on his own as a musician, as a composer, and started to make it big. He was getting a lot of uh, commissions, they call them. He was writing music for all sorts of wealthy patrons, even some of the kings and queens of Europe. And it was around the year 1800, when he was 30 years old, that he started to notice his hearing was diminishing. Almost on a monthly basis, he was hearing less and less and less. And there were letters that survived that he wrote to his friends, talking about his anxiety over the fact that he was losing his hearing. Uh, science and medicine being nothing like they are today, uh, the doctors couldn't do anything for him. 
whatever treatments they might have offered uh, could have potentially made things much worse. And by the time he was in his mid-30s, he was completely deaf to the entire world. And he went through a very dark point in his life where the only thing that brought him joy, making music, writing music, he felt that there was no way he could go on. And he even uh, contemplated ending his own life. But he had decided that in the midst of all this turmoil and all this difficulty, that he loved his music so much that he was going to find some way to carry on, some way to make his life worth living, and cast aside the negativity and try his, try his best. And over the course of the rest of his life, the remaining 27, 28 years he had on this planet, he came to write some of the most remarkable music ever written by the hand of man. The Ode to Joy is one of the many melodies that come out of the Ninth Symphony. The Ninth Symphony is an hour and a half long from beginning to end. And he wrote it when he was completely deaf to the world. One can only imagine the type of anxiety and the, the, the constant swirl of thoughts he must have had in his mind when that piece was being premiered and he was sitting in the audience. Um, and I tell the kids this because he's a tremendous example of someone who, in spite of terrible odds against him, through the, the spirit of his own determination and his own resolve, made something truly remarkable out of it. And that's one of the many reasons that his name is spoken of today. And one last little bit, if any of you ever go to Symphony Hall in Boston to see the Boston Pops or the Boston Symphony, you'll notice there's a really, really fancy gilded border all around the stage. It's a fancy word, they call it the proscenium. Right above the stage, there's this big oval medallion. Beethoven's name is scrolled right across it. We hope you enjoy the performance of Ode to Joy, and we'll continue now. Thank you. Awesome triangle playing of Chaz Magri and Allison Crawford on that last one.
So before we say goodbye for the evening, I just want to thank you all for coming. I want to wish all of you a very happy holidays and every good wish for a happy 2019. Before we go, the band's gonna play an encore. We're gonna reprise our version of Jingle Bells, and this time I would invite all of you, if you'd like, to sing along while we play. Thank you very much, and have a great evening.